The anime begins when a teenage boy named Yuki teleports to the world of Isekai, where adventurers from all over the universe gather and accept various missions. When Yuki was in the Isekai world, he suddenly lost part of his memory, and the only thing he remembered was his name. Then a white-haired girl named Kokoro Natsume came to him and said that she got a mission based on a prophecy from a girl named Amit to protect him. When Kokoro met Yuki for the first time, she immediately cooked a seaweed rice dish and shared it with him. While they were enjoying their meal, two strange wolves suddenly appeared and attacked them. She thought the wolf was the first enemy they had to conquer, so she asked Yuki to try to defeat the wolf. Unfortunately, his ability has not been fully honed, and he still doesn't know how to get his strength out, so he fails to defeat the wolf. Elsewhere in a river, an orange-haired girl named Pecorine is seen drinking fresh water to quench her thirst after being tricked by two male bandits and losing her precious sword. Meanwhile, Kokoro takes Yuki to the center of the city, where humans and various other races, such as elves, live side by side. They originally intended to spend the night at an inn, but since they didn't have much money, they were forced to sleep in the open. The next day, Kokoro and Yuki go to the Adventurer's Guild office run by a bespectacled girl named Karin to accept their first mission to earn enough money. Their first mission is to collect mushroom plants that grow in the ruins of old buildings. After arriving at the site of the ruins of the old building, they started gathering as many mushroom plants as possible. In the middle of their work, Yuki accidentally met Pecorin, the girl who had previously been robbed by the bandits. Seeing Pecorin, who looked weak and hungry, Yuki and Kokoro immediately cooked and gave food to her. While they were enjoying the seaweed rice and grilled mushrooms, a group of mushroom monsters suddenly attacked them, so the three of them immediately fought against the mushroom monsters. When he attacked the mushroom monster using his sword, he suddenly awakened a power where he could enhance the strength of his friends. The next day, Yuki and Kokoro find Pecorine participating in an eating contest and win the eating contest by a landslide, attracting the attention of many people. Pecorine recognized two male bandits who had previously stolen the sword among the crowd, so she immediately chased the two bandits. Unfortunately, while chasing the bandits, they were confronted by a giant pig monster controlled by someone's magic. Fortunately, with Pecorine's energy, she could blow the pig monster away with one very hard blow. But the pig monster accidentally fell on a half-cat girl named Kyaru, until she fainted. When she wakes up from fainting, Pecorine, who feels guilty, immediately apologizes and feeds her food. However, because the food Pecorine gave her was still hot, Kyaru became angry and decided to leave the three of them. While Kyaru was relaxing on a tree, she saw two male bandits carrying a crystal sword running because they were chased by a black dragon. She, who had previously heard that Pecorine's sword had been stolen, immediately realized it was her sword. Kyaru directly goes to Pecorine and the others to tell them that at this time, the bandit who stole her sword has been taken away by a dragon. Kyaru then helps them by showing the way to the valley where the black dragon is nesting. Yuki tried to get the dragon's attention so it could release the two bandits, but the dragon ate him instead. Elsewhere, Kyaru secretly controls the dragon by using her magic book to make the dragon rampage even more. It turns out that all this time, she was planning to attack Pecorine because her real mission was to kill Pecorine. After struggling hard enough, Pecorine and Yuki finally managed to snatch the sword from the dragon's body, and she regained her power. With the extraordinary power of the crystal sword, she could slay the black dragon with just one slash of the sword. After the black dragon died, they found an enormous treasure of gold, and the two bandits thanked her for saving them. That day, Pecorine decides to make a guild with Yuki and Kokoro as members, while Kyaru refuses to join and leaves them. Along the way, Kyaru seems annoyed that she failed to attack and kill Pecorine. After that, she met her leader at a temple and received orders to cancel the mission to kill Pecorine. From that day on, she was only ordered to keep an eye on Pecorine and investigate who she really was. One day when Yuki was walking around in the middle of the city, he accidentally met a demon girl who was poisoned with a potion. He thought that the demon girl was starving and gave her seaweed rice so that she would recover before she finally left. Soon after that, when he and Kokoro were walking together, they met Kyaru, who was watching Pecorine from outside the window. It turned out that Pecorine was ordering all the menus in the restaurant until the restaurant's food supply was almost run out. Luckily, the restaurant still had a few bugs to make delicious dishes, so she and the others could return to eating together. At that moment, Yuki offered Kyaru to join their guild and complete the adventure mission together, but she refused their offer. The next day while Pecorine was working in a restaurant, a large, very fat man made a scene by being rude to customers and injuring the restaurant owner's hand. Luckily, she had such great cooking skills that she could temporarily replace the chef at the restaurant. A few days later, Kyaru finally accepted Yuki's offer to join their adventure guild, 
and they started registering their guild members to the Adventurer's Guild. Karin then gave them their first mission, to explore different types of food and enjoy it together. Unfortunately, because their guild was still relatively new and their members were few, the base they received was a very dirty old house. Yuki and the others were forced to spend the day cleaning up the old house and redecorating it to make it habitable. While Yuki was cleaning the window, Kyaru, who was holding the chair, suddenly screamed because an insect crawled on her leg. As a result of that incident, the chair he was standing on became unstable, and he fell down until he fainted. In his subconscious, Yuki met a girl who introduced herself as Amit. Amit tells Yuki to always be careful because soon, he will meet a fairly strong enemy. In the afternoon, Pekorin had made a table that she had made herself using logs, and Kokoro had also come with a lot of equipment to equip their new base. After cleaning and tidying up the room all day, they recharged themselves with the dinner Pekorin had prepared. Yuki suddenly had a high fever at night, so Kokoro and the others took him to the nearest hospital. But the hospital they visited looked strange and suspicious. Every nurse and doctor in the hospital was dressed like a magician and behaved abnormally. When Yuki was brought to the treatment room, the atmosphere turned tense, and several patients looked frightened while trying to escape from the place. However, the patient was caught by a demon girl named Eriko who had previously been helped by Yuki, and it turned out that she worked as a nurse at the hospital. All day, she kept thinking about him, and from the first time they met, Eriko felt sure that Yuki was the one who was destined to be with her. That night, when she returned to the hospital, she came to the room where Yuki was being treated and approached him, scared him. The next day, Kyaru, Kokoro, and Pekorin prepared to visit Yuki at the hospital and prepare some delicious food for him. Pekorin thought that Yuki might have now recovered and improved, but in reality, he looked tormented and frightened because there was a demon girl who was obsessed with him. Pecorine and the others immediately ran to the hospital after they heard that the hospital they were visiting was a fake hospital built by a group of evil adventurers who wanted to conduct experiments on their patients. After arriving at the hospital, they secretly infiltrated the hospital to save Yuki and take him away from the place. Although it wasn't easy at first, they finally got him out of the hospital and took him to a real doctor. A few days later, after Yuki recovered, they began to travel and carry out their first mission together. On the way, they rested and camped near the river while enjoying the meat Pecorin made. They also spent the night enjoying the fruits she picked, which could make anyone who ate them drunk. Seeing their silly actions, Kokoro looked moved because she had joined the group for an adventure together. The next morning when they woke up, Yuki was suddenly kidnapped by a giant dog monster. Fortunately, a shy green-haired girl named Aoi appears and saves him from the dog monster. After that, she helped him and his friends by giving directions so they could arrive at their destination safely. On the other hand, there was an adventurer group of three girls named Shiori, Mahiru, and Ayane. On the way, they are suddenly attacked by a mysterious shadow that can imitate their appearance and strength. They seem to have a hard time defeating the shadow monster, and Shiori, who couldn't hold on anymore, was swallowed by the shadow monster. Meanwhile, Mahiru and Ayane had survived the shadow monster's attack and arrived at the adventurer group's gathering location. The weak Mahiru also informed the others about the appearance of the shadow monster so that they could always be vigilant. Yuki went to the forest with other guild members and Shiori's older sister, Hatsune, to investigate the shadow monster. On the other hand, an army of shadow monsters also appeared in the residential area, so the citizens became frightened and ran to save themselves. Pekorin was trying hard to fight Shiori and the army of shadow monsters to protect the settlement's residents, while Yuki and the others still have to fight against a woman from the royal army named Christina. The battle was so fierce that Yuki was able to awaken his power to increase his friend's magic ability and attack Christina together, but all of their combined attacks were still not enough to defeat her. Fortunately, she did not continue the fight and decided to leave them. When Pecorine began to be overwhelmed to defeat the shadow monster alone, Kyaru immediately helped her by releasing very strong magic power. Yuki and the others had also arrived at the residential area so they could help Pecorine to save Shiori from the influence of the shadow monster's magic. After defeating the shadow monster, they began to complete various missions to get food rewards. One day, Kyaru suggests they take on another mission that offers rewards other than food. Yuki and the others went to the Adventurer's Guild office to look for a new mission with a bigger reward. Karin also gave their group a different mission than usual, namely to teach a group of newbie adventurers to complete their mission. They met a group of child adventurers consisting of three little girls named Kyoka, Misogi, and Mimi. In the evening, Kyaru starts looking for a safe route to help the little girl group find the treasure. Meanwhile, Pecorine prepares the supplies and equipment needed to carry out the mission. The next day, he was assigned to guide the three little girls while Pecorine, Kyaru, and Kokoro would watch them from behind. In the middle of their journey, Yuki and the three little girls are attacked by a fox monster. 
so Kyaru is forced to use magic power to help them secretly. After defeating the wolf monster, Yuki was suddenly caught by a giant bird, so his friends ran to save him. The three little girls also couldn't do much because the giant bird's strength was too great, and they had also run out of energy after a long journey. Luckily, Pecorine managed to get some extra energy after she found some food, so she was able to awaken her strength and was able to defeat the giant bird with one slash. Thus, their mission to assist the group of novice adventurers had been successfully completed. A few days later, Yuki and the others took a vacation to a beach to have fun and enjoy the ocean view. A girl who owns a restaurant invites them to eat together at their restaurant. Although the food at the restaurant was very delicious, not many customers visited the restaurant because there were rival restaurants that offered excellent food menus. Hearing this, Kyaru suggested that their group help the restaurant find new ingredients from the sea. But after searching for various fish and underwater animals, they could only find ordinary ingredients. Finally, they saw a giant squid that emerged from under the sea, dragging a girl into the middle of the ocean. Pecorine and the others immediately rushed to subdue the giant squid and save the girl. After successfully defeating the giant squid, Kokoro gets the idea to make the giant squid meet a new ingredient in the restaurant. As a result, the restaurant they visited before became bustling with customers thanks to their delicious new menu. After Yuki and the others enjoyed their vacation, they returned to their base and resumed their usual routine. One day when Yuki and Kokoro visit their regular restaurant, they meet a fortune teller girl named Shinobu and the ghost of a girl named Miyako. Shinobu then takes Yuki and Kokoro to her headquarters and tells them that her guild is trying to resurrect a legendary female vampire named Ilya. And after that, Shinobu's group managed to find her hiding place and break the seal that locked her. Ilya got up and came out of her chest as a little girl because her vampire powers had weakened. The next day when Yuki and Kokoro were enjoying a meal together, a girl named Rino, who said that she was Yuki's younger sister, suddenly approached Kokoro. She felt jealous of their closeness, so she immediately scolded Kokoro. Fortunately, another Yuki's sister named Shizuru came and immediately calmed Rino down while explaining that the two of them were Yuki's siblings. One day, Kyaru and the others got information that a monster was blocking the city's trade routes so that many foodstuffs could not be delivered, and food became very scarce. Pekorin also suggested that they make the monster their next mission. The next day they started setting a trap while Kyaru was assigned to be bait, even though she had refused to do so. After Kyaru managed to lure the monster away, they caught the monster with their trap, and Pecorine quickly slashed it with her sword. After they returned to the city, the merchants greeted Pecorine and gave her some groceries as thanks for defeating the monster. That night, Yuki has a nightmare where he sees all his friends have died helplessly, and Ameth tells him that the nightmare is actually a reality. That means what he saw in the dream could be a prediction of the future or his memories of the past. The next day when Kyaru was walking in the middle of the city, a giant shadow monster suddenly appeared and attacked everyone. Hecorine also took all her strength to defeat the monster, but the monster turned bigger and stronger. She also tries to protect Kyaru and gives her equipment to Kyaru, so she doesn't get hurt. Yuki, who had arrived at that place, immediately protected the unconscious Pecorine and started to fight against the shadow monster. In the middle of the fight, he suddenly had a vision of Pecorine's true identity and memories of her past. It turns out that Pecorine is a princess of the Landisol kingdom named Princess Eustiana, who has been traveling to various countries to gain knowledge. Unfortunately, when she returned to the royal palace, all of the royal members suddenly didn't recognize her and instead kicked her out of the kingdom. Since then, she decided to leave the kingdom and go on an adventure to find new friends or family. In that vision, Yuki also met a girl named Akira who could help him bring out the greatest power hidden in his soul. After he got up, he helped Kyaru, who was starting to struggle and almost gave up fighting the monster. After successfully awakening the full power from within himself, Yuki finally defeated the monster by a landslide. The biggest mission of Yuki and his friends has finally been successfully completed, and they are ready for their next adventure in the future. The anime ends. This anime teaches us not to give up on facing every life challenge, and to always try to connect with people who support us to become more successful.